Hey everybody, Omar here, your Knife of the Party guy, and I am back with another fun-filled video for you. And today we're going to be doing a discussion video. If you guys remember a while back, I did a video on my top three all-time favorite South African customs. Uh, and you haven't checked, seen that, that video, you can certainly check it out on my channel. Um... But I left out a couple of honorable mentions, so this is going to be part one of two videos. Two honorable mentions that I left out, and I thought I should go ahead and just discuss those. Um, but we're going to go back a bit to talking about knives in general. Now, if you guys kind of remember, uh, maybe about eight years ago, uh, Nick Shabazz did a video on this knife here. And it made such an impact on the knife community. Everybody had to get one of these. Uh, at the time, the uh, this is the Spyderco uh, Swish Bowie. I mean, even at the time, we didn't remember. We couldn't rem figure out how to how to uh, pronounce the knife. Is it sleaze, slice, whatever? We didn't know. We found out that it was actually pronounced Swish, as in Swish Bowie, and uh, this knife just got so much attention because of Nick. Shabazz promotion of it. Uh, everybody had to have one of these knives. At the time, the Spyderco Swish Bowie was selling for right around $270. Today, uh, the knife is discontinued. They no longer make it. And uh, if you wanted to have this knife, you're probably going to have to pay probably eight, nine, maybe even a grand to get this knife on eBay if anybody out there is selling it. And I don't think anybody's going to spend that much for, you know, a knife is uh, a, a knife like this, uh, even though it's a fantastic knife. I mean, Nick Shabazz was absolutely correct. This is one of the smoothest production knives that is out there. Uh, you're just not going to find uh, a knife that was built uh, to bring the attention of every knife lover out there. He even talked about you know, how all the details on the knife were paid special attention to, how the fact that the scales line up perfectly with the ridges on this um, backspacer here. I mean, if you look, tip it over, all of a sudden these ridges here, they completely disappear, or almost disappear, because they come up just perfectly aligned with the um, with the uh, the scales on the knife. So the details were really... Really very, very well done on it. Uh, almost to the point of obsession, which is really quite difficult to do on a production knife. The fact that the uh, crown part of the knife intersects with the flat part on the blade. I mean, all those were, all those descriptions of this knife made it almost seem like it was a custom piece. And actually, it's not. It's a production a production knife, but it got so much attention uh, that Nick Shabazz shot it all the way up to the top, uh, you know, pretty much right up there in the minds of every knife knife lover as being the most important knife next to the 05 to the 0562, which even today everybody's aware of that knife. They know what that knife is. Um, so what happens is this creates sort of like uh, an aura about the knife. Now, this is not the knife that I want to talk about, but I wanted to bring this knife out so what I so I could actually explain that you know great knives happen uh, when the the attention to detail kind of goes over the top. So I'm going to go ahead and put this knife away for a second, uh, and I'm going to bring out uh, the honorable mention that I was talking about, which is this knife right here. This is the Deshorn in Vubu, and uh, this is a custom knife made by Deshorn. It's his most popular model. It's his signature model knife, um, and I've done the video on this, but, you know, why not we'll just go ahead and bring it out again, because um, it is really, really fantastic um, for two reasons. One, the steel on the knife is uh, Nitrobe 77. And it goes through an intensive uh, heat treatment process, and then they dip it in liquid nitrogen four times to give it strength, making this knife uh, practically, making the steel on this knife practically indestructible. And 
This is probably one of the sharpest knives I've ever come across. I mean, it's just, and I've used this knife to cut open a ton of boxes. And uh, it is just absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. Uh, and the other reason the knife gets a lot of attention um, is the fact that the knife is incredibly smooth. Uh, but you have to keep in mind, this knife isn't even on ball bearings. That's the other wonder that everybody, when they get a hold of this knife, or if they're lucky enough to buy one of these and, and have this in their collection, uh, the action on it is just absolutely freaking ridiculous. I mean, I, I've i got steel ball bearing knives that don't drop shut like that. I mean, this is just on washers. And just that alone would make someone spend the money for this knife. Uh, plus the fact that the, the knife is just simple. There's not a lot of flash to it. Basically, it's two scales made out of carbon fiber. You got a nice carbon fiber backspacer. Uh, we've got the wave pattern on the back of the knife for the uh, file work. I mean, it's just really, really simple. Nothing over the top. There's no zirconium. There's no white, no white Westinghouse on here. There's nothing super special. It's just a good, solid working tool knife that just happens to be a custom. Um, and just because of those reasons alone, this knife wound up in my collection as an honorable mention. Because I will guarantee you, when you get into the world of customs, uh, not even South African custom knives, just customs in general, whatever your favorite might be, whether it's a Shigura, uh, Shigura or, uh, you know, a, a Grimsmo Norseman, whatever that favorite knife is, you know, you, you know, you probably got a bunch of those custom knives somewhere out there. There's probably, I'm going to say, maybe at least 20 knife collectors out there that have a custom collection, a general custom collection, and this knife is in their collection. This is one of them, guaranteed. It's made that much of an impact, and this is made by hand, this knife. Made by hand. And he does pump these knives out uh, quite often, uh, and he will make you a one-of-a-kind of these knives if you ask him to. Uh, this one is not a one-of-a-kind, but I did have a one-of-a-kind made for me, and if you sit tight, I will show it to you. So like I said, the Mbubu is really uh, one of those knives that just caught the knife world by, you know, by storm. Everybody had to get one of these if they once they got, once they jumped into the world of customs. Uh, this one is my one-of-a-kind made by Des Horn. Uh, you know, between the two, they're completely different knives. Uh, both have the same steel, Nitrobe 77. Uh, but this one is very different, and I'll show you why. If you look very closely on this knife, it just has his signature on there, and it says Nitrobe 77. This one, on the other hand, also has his signature on it, and it also says Nitro 77, but there's a difference. This one has a round circle, and there's something written in the round circle, and what's written in the round circle is ceramic balls. So he actually made me the only Mvubu with ceramic ball bearings on it. Uh, I mean, if you look at both these knives side by side, you'll see the big difference. This one is a lot thicker. See the construction? He had to make room for the ball bearing system. So we go from super thin washer version of the knife to this much more thicker version of the knife uh, just to make room for the ball bearing system inside the knife. And this one, which I think is kind of fun to have because if this one falls shut on washers only, right? Imagine what the one with ceramic bearings does. Check it out. It doesn't even... <laughs> it, there's no delay. You just tip it up, and it's down. I mean, that he... You know, and it is... It's almost overly smooth. But, I mean, I still do love it. 
but yeah, you can seriously injure yourself if you don't get your finger out of the way fast enough. Uh, but yeah, the ceramic ball bearings make a huge difference. However, the control you need for a knife to fall shut really is, this is all you really need. Because, I mean, look at that. That is just absolutely beautiful. And the reason this knife got so much attention is because it's just a simple looking knife. But it does look elegant, doesn't it? I mean, it's got a beautiful drop point blade uh, on there. It's just spectacular. Uh, the ergonomics on it are really good. It's just your regular straight handle going across. Uh, you know, it, it's kind of a little bit thin up at the top and then it's kind of... Uh, gets wider down towards the bottom, uh, and it it's almost as if though it conforms with your hand oh so perfectly. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, really, I really think that this is one of the sort of special secret knives uh, that's out there that a lot of custom knife makers should be aware of. Uh, and I know there's a lot of them. You know, you've got your Grimsmo Norseman, you've got your Shirt Goroffs, you know, you've got your pinas. I mean, there's so many knives out there. But, I mean, if you're looking for a really good custom knife that's going to cut the hell out of everything uh, and have a blade that will probably not wear out on you until, like, maybe the 2,000th time that you use it. Uh, I know you don't believe me, but I actually use this knife. I think I've cut up maybe 50 boxes since I've had this one. And it looks kind of unused, but I mean, if you look closely, there's scratches on it all over the blade. So you can tell that I've used it, uh, but that's all that's worn out on the blade. It doesn't look like it's, you know, losing its edge, and it is not. I mean, Nitro 77 is just a killer steel to work with as far as longevity and the, uh, the performance you're going to get out of this knife. Plus the fact that the knife is incredibly light. It's not one of these overly heavy uh, titanium frame lock customs. Uh, it's just a very light knife uh, that can cut through just about anything. I mean, I, I have... And it's, it's also very solid... Uh, of a knife. It, I've never, there's no blade play in this at all. It's almost as solid as a frame lock, in my opinion. Uh, you know, over the dozens of times that I've actually used this knife, uh, which is the main reason why I got two of them. Uh, I started using this knife right away. In fact, the week that I got it, I cut about five or six boxes with it, and I just... I said to myself, damn, I love this knife so much. I got to get me another one. So he made me this custom one uh, with ball bearings. And this one's pretty much been safe queened ever since. I've never even used it uh, to cut anything. I, I think maybe I cut paper with it once. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would probably consider this knife more to be like the 0562 of the uh, South African custom world. It's just one of those knives where the knife maker just nailed it. He just absolutely nailed it. Um, and everyone that owns this knife, whatever version of this knife you own, whether it's uh, carbon fiber or lightning strike carbon fiber, whatever, uh, no one is disappointed by the performance of the knife. Uh, plus the fact that it looks really classy. Uh, and the fact that it's it's a lot of fun to carry it, knowing that it's going to be drop shut smooth, uh, it makes a hell of a conversation piece. I mean, if you hand this to someone, they go, "Wow, who made this one's real smooth?" Then you tell them that it, that, that there's no ball bearings in the knife and that it's only just uh, washers. You're going to be amazed, or they're going to be amazed. Um, and yet, for what for what all my fans love about it. The knife maker who makes the knife, Deshorn, doesn't really particularly... I can't say he actually really enjoys making this knife. I mean, he makes it because it's a very popular knife in his arsenal of models of knives that he makes. Everybody uh, raves about it, but I mean, for him... 
this knight is pretty much an afterthought, you know, it, it's like his calling card, you know, it's like, uh, hi, my name is Deshorn, I make knives, this is what I do when you land this to you, and, uh, you know, you'll, you know, you'll flip it, you'll look at it, but if you go on his website and see some of the knives that he really cherishes making, they don't look anything like this, a lot of them are like super elegant, fancy Rolls Royce looking knives, uh, that are on his website. He's even got one uh, amazing automatic knife that I will never get because it's like five thousand uh, dollars. But yeah, it's it's an automatic knife, custom automatic knife that he makes. Uh, that is just absolutely spectacular. If you want to see that knife, yeah, you can check that out on YouTube also. In fact, Gus Horn talks about it uh, in the video, and he shows you. Uh, uh, the knife and demonstrates how it works and it is a hell of a wonder and it actually makes the mbubu you know look like you know like a knife you would buy at a 7-eleven basically uh but i mean you know again this knife has made such an impact in the custom world that just about everyone that has a custom collection will have this knife somewhere in their collection. And I guarantee you this much, the knife makes such an impression uh, that it's also a very well-used knife. It's not one of those knives uh, where, you know, you're going to wind up safe queening it just because this thing cuts like crazy. Uh, and the blade doesn't wear out. I mean, mine... Yeah, there's scratches on it if I hold it up to the light, but the edge kind of pretty much stays. I mean, it, it's, I'm telling you, this is really an amazing, amazing knife. And I can't, I can't talk much, I can't say any more than that. Uh, this one still makes the model. I highly recommend getting this model knife if you're interested in getting something that's going to last you a long time and have amazing cutting power. And if you just want to order it, I guarantee you, if you just want to order it to feel that drop shut action on a knife that's only made with washers, yeah, yeah even that alone is worth it. Um, it's just an incredible knife. It's made that much of an, of an impression on me that when I leave the house, uh, sometimes if, I, if I'm too lazy or I don't feel like picking out what I want to carry in my pocket, I'll just grab this and go, and I'll be very happy with this in my pocket each and every day. Uh, so this is Omar, your knife of the party guy, highlighting one of two of my honorable mention knives uh, in the video that I did two weeks ago, um, as far as my like my all time favorite knives. Uh, yeah, I really couldn't, I really could not uh, not mention this knife. I have to because it's made that much of an impact on me as a knife collector, and actually the possibility of what you can do to a knife, where the knife performs amazingly well. It's an amazingly uh, it's an amazing piece, and, and just the fact that the knife is so simple and made very simply, uh, that alone is another reason. So, I mean, you can get spectacular performance out of a knife, and it doesn't have to have all the flash that you would expect a custom knife uh, from South Africa to have. Sometimes the flash is very quiet and actually hidden in the knife, and you're not even going to experience it until you own the knife. So again, this is Omar, your knife of the party guy, signing off with one of two of my honorable mentions, the Deshorn M. Boo Boo. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, I'll see you in just a few seconds with uh, part two of my second knife that I'd like to present to you as an honorable mention. And I'll see you guys in a few minutes.